Hi, in this session I'm going to cover how to create a work breakdown structure or WBS in Excel. Now if you really wanted to create a work breakdown structure, the more appropriate tool is probably going to be Microsoft Project or any other type of project management tool. But if you didn't have that available and Excel was your only option, there is a way you can do it, but it's not really pretty. It's more of a hack, but we can go ahead and uh, start how to do it. Uh, but before we do that, just kind of a little overview of what a WBS is. It's basically a deliverable-oriented decomposition of a project into smaller components. So this is what I got from wikipedia.org. Uh, basically, you're decomposing a larger system into smaller components. And you can also code those different components so you can get a, a, a table hierarchy view of it. So this, is, this part is what we're going to try to do in Excel. So what you can do is probably type in your task. So we have our aircraft system, air vehicle. This is the same as what we have here. And maybe we typed it in here with the coding. And we did 1.0, 1.1, 1.11, 1.11, 1.11. And we're adding more. And we want to start to sort by these codes. Well, if you start sorted by these codes in Excel, we will go under data and, and sort. If we sort it ascending, what's it going to happen is the way the Excel sorts it is more alphabetically, numerically, and it doesn't really sort it in line with how it's seeing it. So it's going 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and then it's going to see this 1.1.1. .1 this it sees as numbers. This it starts to see as as text because of the way that we have our, our decimals or dots laid out now. It's not seeing this as it's not seeing these values as numbers. There's there's too many dots or too many decimals. So it's going to mess up the way that we have it set up if we start to sort it by this code right now. So what we can do is we can create a format and I'm going to go, and go into how we can do that so it sort, starts to sort it correctly for us when we start to add other tasks and there's a couple steps that, that are going to be involved and the first step is actually putting the different codes into different co into columns so we have a one in one column and the second the second number after the decimal in the second column so in this instance I, I, I'm going to call it levels so that they're kind of levels of detail or the levels of levels or sub levels of the code. So in this the aircraft system is going to be one oops, it's going to be one and zero. And the air vehicle is going to be one, one, oops, one, and also zero. And I'll I'll explain why we have a zero here later on, even though there's not here. It's going to help us with our sorting. And this is going to be one, 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 one go ahead and fill out these and have to have a zero at the end for all of these fill that here that's zero one one three zero and then one two zero one three and zero now the reason why we have the zero, zeros here is um, if we didn't have the zeros, it wouldn't sort correctly. So for example, um, what I want to do now is kind of sort these, sort them. Uh, let me go ahead and actually take out the zeros first. So now I want to go ahead and sort and try to sort this. So I'm going to go up to the data tab, go under sort. And I'm going to sort all these levels, so I'm going to go ahead and add five levels. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to sort first by level one, and then by level two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, and then five. So now we see the way that sorted really hasn't sorted correctly. So see we have our 1.0 here and then we've got our 11111 and 1112 and 11. So the, the, this one should have came after the 1.0. So 
So in order to do that correctly, we need to have the zeros after it. Oh, I had left a zero here, but let's go ahead and add a zero here, a zero here, a zero. And now we'll go under sort, and it's already selected here, and now we're going to click OK. Now you can see that it has sorted correctly. So we have 1.0, 1.1, 1.111, 1.11. One and then one dot one 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 one. So you can see it's sorted correctly. Now that's that part where we have it sorted. Now we want to be able to bring all this together into one cell instead of having having it separated out. So it's going to involve a couple different functions or formulas that we're going to have to do. That first we're going to have to concatenate all this together and kind of bring it back with the decimal. So, so now I'm going to use the concatenate function and that's I'm, I'm going to type in concatenate and just tab it to complete it and I'm going to select that text comma add in a period in quotations comma select level 2 text comma add in another period in quotations and then level 3 comma whoops comma and then a period comma and then level four and then another comma and then level five and also finish that off with a comma close quotes close parentheses press enter and now I've got my concatenation feature here I'm going to go ahead and double click the fill handle to bring this one down so now what I wanted to do next is to count how many cells in my the range here from level 1 to level 5 have a number in it. So that we can do that with the count function. So I'm going to use count parentheses and just select that range. Close parentheses and enter and just double click it to bring it down. So there's two values, there's two cells that have numbers here, there's three that have numbers here, there's four that have numbers here. So that, that is the count function here. So now I want to use the substitute function to find out what is the last period that comes right after a, a value, a number. So what I'm going to do is substitute that period for some other character. I'm going to do a question mark here and, and we'll see why we do that later on. So I'm going to type equal substitute tab and I want to substitute this text this cell this text in this cell and I'm going to take the old the old text uh, which is a period so I have to put that in quotes and I want to put in a question mark and then the instance number is this count because it's going to be the second period here because I've counted two if there's two values here, there's going to be a period that follows after that. So there's three values here, there's going to be a third period that follows after that. So I'm going to go ahead and reference this count here. And shift close parentheses, press enter. And now you can see that instead of that third period there, it's going to be a question mark. I'm going to double click it and bring it down. So you see how it's done that. Now what I'm going to do is I want to go into the find function now. In the find function, I want to find out which place in the cell is that question mark. So here we go, one, two, three, four. That's in the fourth place. Here it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be in the sixth place. So the find function does that. So I'm equal find. I want to find the question mark in this text. And I don't need that fourth. You can see if let me bring up the function the start number I don't need that that's optional see how it, it's bolded here that's that's required that's required values here but if it's not bolded it's an optional so go ahead and cancel that so go ahead and double click the fill handle and bring it down so the question marks in the fourth place this question marks in the sixth place so now I want to do is I don't want all this extra these extra characters at the after the question mark I just want to have 1.0 1.11 so I can reference the same thing here 1.1 1.1.1 so I want to just have those so what I want to do is I want to get I want to get rid I want to bring back all the values up to that question mark 
and that we can do with the left function. So left in this text, I want to go up to number 4, right? So if I put number 4 there, this is what it gives me. Let me go and double click that. So I can I still have that question mark there. So I'm going to go ahead and minus a one cuz I don't want really I don't want I don't want 4. I want 3. I want to get 1 2 3. And this one I don't want up to the 6. I want to get it 1 2 3 4 5 6. The 6 character. I want to get the left basically gives me all the characters up to that number. So I don't want the 6 cuz the 6 would be the question mark here and the 8th would be the question mark here. So I'm going to do, do a minus 1. Minus 1 here. Since I select this, this whole cell here and I've got this cell activated, I can just press Control Enter and it's going to copy it down that, fo that formula all the way down. See how neat that is? Now in the final, I have this final column here. You can see that we have zeros here, but the only time that we really have an ending zero is in the first instance, 1.0. See that here, we're 1.2 here? We don't really have a zero here. And if we look at our work breakdown structure here, how they give us our example, <laughs> it's interesting. We have our 1.0 that begins here, but anything after that, there's no zero. So I'll just go ahead and, oops, I'll just go ahead and create a formula that will get rid of the zeros unless it's that first one here. So in the final column, we're going to create an if statement. So I'm going to do if the length, so I'm, what I'm going to do is count the length. What the length does is it, it counts it counts how many characters are in the cell. So the, I'm going to do, I'm going to do length of this, and it's going to be three. So one, two, three. So if that equals to three, then if that's true, I'm just going to bring back that cell L2. But if it's false, what I'm going to do is I just want to bring back the leftmost values minus these these two, the two, the two last characters the 0 and the 1, the 0 and the 1, the 0 and the 1 here. So that's going to be accomplished by a left statement of this value and how many and which how many numbers? So I, what I want to do is I want to do a length of this value. Whoops. A length of this value and then minus 2. Then close parentheses, close parentheses, press enter. Go ahead and click the fill handle, double click the fill handle to bring that down, and now this has lopped off that zero there. So this is kind of a lengthy formula, but let me go ahead and show you how it's it works. We can just bring up the you know, the formula analyzer. I think it's the, you can use the keyboard shortcut, Alt T U F, and it's going to evaluate the formula. So let's go bring it, this, evaluate this formula. And let's, we click the evaluate button, so it's going to click the. It's going to go through the first portion of that formula, the length of 1.0. So, it's, and then it's going to see that does 5 equal 3? And it says false. Well, it's, if it's false, it's not going to bring back L3, right? It's going to go into this particular portion of the formula now. I click evaluate again, and then it's going to evaluate L3. Well, it's going to evaluate false, right? So that becomes not applicable. So it's going to evaluate the second portion there. The length of L3 is, it brings that 1.1.0. One, one one the length is 5, then 5 minus 2. It's going to bring back a 3. So it's going to count 1, 2, 3. So it's going to lop off the, the dot and the 0 there. And you can see the 1.1. One one. And that is our final formula, or our final output and close that. So that is going to be the way that we can bring that bring that in to get the final coding. Now what we can do here now, this is hard coded here, is I can go ahead and just put equal this value here and press enter and then just go ahead and double click the fill hand fill handle here. So now you have a structure where you can start to add other things and the formatting is going to be done for you. The coding is going to be done for you. And the way that you would have to sort is you're going to have to sort in these level fields, level 1 to 5. So let's say, for example, I put uh, there's some system engineering that, that's hap going to be happening, maybe some uh, testing, system engineering test, I don't know, or maybe design, okay, uh, design review. 
design review. And that's part of system engineering at 1.2.1. One. Okay, and then the zero at the end. So now I've got it filled out here. And if I wanted to sort again, I can just go ahead and go under the data sort and sort by my levels, click OK. So it's brought it right up here and it's sort it's sorted it correctly. So we're not sorting by column A, we're sorting by column C, D, E, F, and then G. So if you want to go ahead and just hide these later on, you can just hide these, select that and right click and just hide them. And you can just go ahead and, and just show this part now. And that would give you that option. Now that's kind of let me go ahead and unhide these. We can actually put all these formulas into one big humongous formula. Um, but it's much easier to follow when we have separated out here. And if you wanted to see how the long formula looked like, this is what it would look like. So that's pretty complex uh, when you really have to look at it. We have our we have our substitute we have our substitute. We, oh, let's, let's, start, let's start from the end. We have our count, and then our substitute here, and then our find, then our, our count and our substitute. So it's kind of very hard to follow. That's why I wanted to break it out into, oops, that's why I wanted to break it out into the different columns to make it a little bit more easier to follow. Then again, this is a hack. Uh, if, if you had to create a work breakdown structure, Microsoft Project probably would be the better option. But if you only had Excel, this is one way that you can do it in Excel. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.